Welcome to Daily News Simplified, an answer to what, why and how of newspaper reading. Today, we are going to discuss the important issues appearing in the Hindu newspaper dated 27th March 2018. Let's begin. The news appears on page number 7 and it reads, Summer of discontent, water crisis looms in Gujarat. Now, this issue of water crisis is very important. As you can see, various questions in previous mains have been asked. For example, examine the impact of climate change on water resources in India. It was asked in the year 2011. Next, the effective management of land and water resources will drastically reduce human miseries, explained recently in 2016. And next, India is well endowed with fresh water resources. Critically examine why it still suffers from water scarcity. As we can see that questions on water crisis have been asked previously in the UPSC papers. Hence, this topic of water crisis becomes important. Now, it comes under your GS paper 1 syllabus of geography and world society specifically under distribution of key natural resources across the world and important geophysical phenomena which also includes drought. So let's see this news what this particular news is all about and how this news becomes important from a prelims point of view. In this news the Gujarat government had announced in January 2018 that water in the Narmada river had reached a 13 year low. And Gujarat's Sardar Sarovar Dam built on this very Narmada river is one of the main source for drinking water to most of the people in Gujarat. Now with this low level of water in the Narmada river has caused a severe water crisis in the entire region. And weak monsoons in the Narmada catchment areas in Madhya Pradesh have aggravated the issue of water crisis. Thus this shows the human dependency on a flowing river for their basic needs. And this dependency is impacted also with respect to any climate change. Thus we see climate change which may also impact change in monsoon pattern or change in rainfall also impacts the human civilization. As in the newspaper you can read that more than 4000 villages are facing severe water crisis as the sources have gone dry due to lack of groundwater recharge more than 50% of the hand pumps in the area are not functioning. Now these hand pumps provides for an efficient source for fresh water supply, especially in the rural areas. And in this respect, the government due to low level of water in the Narmada river has also stopped supply for irrigation of Narmada river. And this move will also impact the growth of agriculture. And this shortage of water is likely to increase in the upcoming dry summer months of April and May. And due to all these reasons, even the municipal authorities have started rationing supply of water for daily use. Now in this respect, let us understand some of the key reasons for water crisis. One of the key reason for severe water crisis is excessive groundwater extraction. Now excessive groundwater extraction has impacted groundwater recharge. To understand this simply, Whatever water is received through rainfalls or flowing rivers get absorbed into the earth. However, the amount of water sipping down the earth is less as compared to groundwater extracted. Thus, due to this loss of balance in groundwater recharge as well as groundwater extraction has been one of the major reasons in severe water crisis in majority of the urban areas. Next important reason is poor water management in cities and this water management pertains to basically the issue of distribution of water and waste of water. The next reason is due to growing of water intensive crops around the city areas. Now by water intensive crops it means those crops which require excessive water like rice, sugarcane, soya bean etc. Another reason which has impacted this water crisis is climate change and climate change pertains to poor monsoon or erratic monsoon cases of frequent droughts and also one of the reasons being rivers changing their course so all these collectively impact the water crisis another important reason is water pollution and water contamination in most of the cities thus it is due to these reasons of water crisis as well as its impact on day-to-day -day life, the Ministry of Water Resources has proposed two bills. 
namely the National Water Framework Bill 2016 and Model Bill for the Conservation, Protection, Regulation and Management of Groundwater 2016. Now these two draft legislations enacted by the Ministry of Water Resources promises to give every person the right to minimum amount of safe water while making the state obliged to protect and conserve water. Now this draft National Water Framework Bill is a right based legislation where every person will have a right to sufficient quantity of safe water and this sufficient quantity of safe water shall be provided to every citizen without any discrimination either on their religion, community, class, gender, age, disability etc. And the model bill for the conservation, protection, regulation and management of groundwater 2016 aims to restore and ensure groundwater security through availability of sufficient quantity and appropriate quality of groundwater to all stakeholders in rural and urban areas. Thus, these two bills on groundwater legislation becomes important with respect to your UPSC examination. In this respect, let us also understand about the Narmada River as prelims questions may be asked on the Narmada River. Narmada River originates in the Amar Kantak Hill in Madhya Pradesh and flows from east to west and this river flows into a rift valley and the river Narmada drains into the Gulf of Kambay or Gulf of Khambar and its major tributaries in the south are the Shakkar, Sher, Tawa, Dudhi and Ganjal whereas tributaries in the north are the Barna, the Hiran, the Karam, Choral and Lohar. Previously questions have been asked on the reasons why few rivers in India flows from east to west. The answer is that they flow in a rift valley. Hence this basic information on river Narmada becomes important from your prelims point of view. So in this news we saw the impact of water crisis as how it affects people and the key reasons for water crisis primarily in the urban areas. And you can see various questions have been previously asked in the mains examination. So this topic of water crisis becomes very important. With this, let's move on to the next news. Now we move to page number 8. Here the news reads, the non-politics of outreach. We need a white paper on the extensive data markets that currently exist in India. This article talks about use of data and its expanse and outreach throughout the world in ways unimaginable in the past. Advances in the field of data technology, handling big data, algorithms, and artificial intelligence has created a digital world and this creation of a digital world has started the debate on various issues such as data sovereignty that is to whom such data actually belongs, the issue of data consent that is whether such data taken by various entities including the government were taken by our express consent or not, the concept of data security that is whether the data which citizens provide are secured or whether they are misused or misutilized for illegal purposes and also the issue of data commercialization that is selling of such data to a third party for commercial purpose. The article suggests that currently we are living in the era of data warfare and advanced militaries like Russia, US and even China recognizes the importance of different kinds of data such as geospatial data to secure its boundaries, social data which they get through various social media apps and different sector specific data. And these advanced militaries are investing in large scale informational warfare and insurgency projects. Thus given the wider ambit of data use, the article thus suggests that the Sri Krishna committee's work which is primarily centered on personal data rights seems insufficient and the government needs to engage on the issue of data security on a much wider scale. And it is in this respect, a white paper on data protection framework has been drafted by the Sri Krishna committee and it has been put in the public domain. And this white paper has also recognized the concept of right to privacy as was decided by the nine judge constitution bench. The report further recognizes that the dangers to privacy in the age of information can originate not only from the state but also from non-state actors and the committee has recognized certain key principles of data protection. Some of these are 
technology agnosticism it means that the law must be technology agnostic or in other words the law must be flexible enough to take into account change technologies and standards of compliance the next principle is holistic application it means the law must apply to both private sector entities and government and in this respect differential obligations may be carved out in the law for certain legitimate aims of the state the next key principle is that of informed consent and in this respect the paper suggests that consent is an expression of human autonomy thus the law needs to take care of such human autonomy the next key principle is that of data minimization that is data which is processed must be minimal and necessary for the purpose thus it also in a way regulates misuse of unnecessary data the next important key principle is controller accountability it emanates from this above principle of data minimization it says the data controller shall be held accountable for any processing of data which is not required next is structured enforcement of data protection framework and last is adequate penalty for wrongful processing of unrequired data thus all these key principles on data protection becomes important and the shri krishna committee will soon come up with a draft legislation on data security law thus this article effectively talks about the age of data warfare and how data's affect our day to day lifestyle from a prelims point of view it is important to understand that shri krishna committee has been formed on data protection and this committee will also legislate a law on data security thus this news becomes important from polity rights issue science and tech as well as social issue for upsc with this let's move on to the next news now the next news appears on page number 9 the news reads a perfect storm in the cotton field why india is the only bt cotton growing country facing the problem of pink ballworm infestation now in this news the government has reduced royalties which local seed companies paid to the company monsanto now monsanto is a us based seed producing company monsanto has the patent for second generation bt cotton seeds namely bolgard 2 or bg2 now this seed was supposed to protect cotton crops against pink ballworm but the seed has grown resistant to this particular toxin of pink ballworm so first let us understand about bt cotton as you can read bt cotton is an insect resistant transgenic crop designed to combat the ballworm bt cotton was created by genetically altering the cotton genome to express microbial protein from the bacterium bacillus thuringiensis so this is the acronym for bt that is bacillus thuringiensis and this bt cotton is produced using the recombinant dna technology in a recombinant dna technology works on the principle of joining together of dna molecules from two different species which are then inserted into the host organism to produce new genetic combination the characteristics of such seeds are they are generally pest resistant they are also drought resistant and they produce extra yield thus these are the benefits of bt cotton as well thus the second generation bt cotton was supposed to protect the seed from this manifestation of pink ballworm but the seed has grown resistant to it now the farmers have to spend more money on pesticides to control this particular pink ballworm infestation now this spending of more money by the farmers on further pest control defeats the very purpose for which a bt seeds is purchased and it also adds to the cost of farmers input however the article suggests that this particular problem of infestation of pink ballworm is only in india and not in other countries like usa china or australia in this respect it is important to know that india cultivates long duration hybrids and this duration covers up to 300 days whereas china us and others use hybrids for short duration variety of roughly up to 160 days now the problem with long duration hybrids is that the long duration of indian cotton crops between 160 to 300 days allows the pest to thrive and evolve resistance during the later half of the period whereas this later half of 160 to 300 days 
is not available in the short duration variety which basically is used by china usa and others and from indian perspective these hybrid seeds are more financially attractive for indian farmers as they are comparatively cheaper so the article has suggested various solutions such as shifting to short duration crops shifting to previous first generation ball guard as that particular seed is resistant to pink ball worm the article suggests that the second generation hybrid seeds also protect the cotton crop from other worms such as the tobacco cut worm and the american ball worm however shifting to first generation hybrid seeds may reduce this particular incentive and first generation seeds may be attacked by tobacco cut worm as well as american ball worm another solution which the article suggests is to shift to third generation hybrid seeds which currently the us china and australia are planning to thus this news with respect to pink ball worm becomes important from your environment section of the upsc syllabus in this particular news we saw the manifestation of pink ball worm in the bt cotton seeds about the recombinant dna technology the benefits of such hybrid seeds that is they are pest resistant drought resistant and gives extra yield and the possible solutions not only to avoid pink ball worm but also in terms of future farming of bt seeds in india with this let's move on to the next news now we come to page number 13 here the news reads government to borrow rupees 2.88 lakh crore in h1 48% of fy19 budget goal in this news the central government is expected to borrow 47.5% of its budgeted gross borrowing for the period april to september 2018 and to facilitate this borrowing the government will issue inflation indexed bonds now inflation index bond is a bond issued by the sovereign authority which provides the investor a constant return irrespective of the level of inflation in the economy the main objective of this inflation index bond is to provide a hedge or a protection and also to safeguard the investor against macroeconomic risks in an economy these inflation index bonds shall be linked to the cpi or consumer price index or retail inflation it is important to know from prelims point of view that cpi or consumer price index is issued by the ministry of labor and employment now the basic purpose for releasing this inflation index bonds is to protect the savings of poor and middle class family from the effect of inflation another reason is to provide incentives to the household sector to save in financial instruments rather than invest in gold since the investment in these bonds can take care of the prevailing inflation the retail investment shall be benefited the government also intends to introduce government securities of duration 1 to 4 years so this topic of inflation index bonds becomes important from your economy section of the upsc examination as basic prelims question on this iibs or inflation index bonds can be asked hence these are basically issued by sovereign authority or the government and provides constant return irrespective of the level of inflation in the economy this this news with respect to inflation index bonds becomes important with this let's move on to the next news the next news appears page number 11 the news reads india china plan fta breakthrough that is free trade agreement breakthrough chinese commerce minister says the two countries will build a closer partnership in development now in this news india and china plans to negotiate for a free trade agreement in future and in this respect india would coordinate its make in india initiative with china's belt and road initiative including 15 year development agenda and digital india both countries would try to level trade imbalance as currently trade is heavily in favor of china now trade imbalance refers to the difference of import and export when we say that currently trade is heavily in favor of china it means india is importing more for china than india is exporting to china in other words with respect to india export is less than import from china and china and india has also agreed to set up special working group to draw a road map for developing two way trade this news pertains to the international relations part of your upsc syllabus as this concept of 
trade imbalance becomes important from your prelims perspective. With this, we come to an end to today's newspaper. Let's move on to the question for the day.